On behalf of the National Indian Child Welfare Association Board of Directors and our staff, I thank you for honoring the Protect Indian Child Welfare campaign today. NICWA is one of the four core Native organization partners of the campaign, and we are joined by our increasing number of tribes, intertribal organization, mainstream organization, and non-Native partners. I thank each and every one of you for standing with us and for all you do every day to protect our children and the Child Welfare Act and tribal sovereignty. Since our beginning in 1983, NICO has strongly valued collaboration. As a small organization, we have learned that we are not, we are most effective when we form strategic alliances, collaborations, and partnerships. Our approach is to seek out organization and funders whose missions overlap with our own. And through communication, education, partnering, and contracting, we work together to benefit Native children, families, and tribes. Particularly because of the threats of the Indian Child Welfare Act in the last dozen years, collaboration has been an absolute necessity. And we have been fortunate to have so many wonderful partners. In 2018, the Protect Equal Campaign was formed by the four national native organizations whose mission and work touch equal most directly. NICWA, NCAI, AAIA, and we had a fortunate and have been fortunate to be represented in any child welfare litigation by Sam Darby from Denton for eight years. And Sam, Sam's over here. <laughs> and Sam has worked closely with NARV in advising us about the litigation as to protect any child welfare campaign was established. He is a good friend and provides excellent legal counsel. The National Indian Child Welfare Board has been fortunate to meet with Sam, <coughs> with Sam and several, on several occasions. Uh, we're grateful to Dentons for Sam's pro bono work to defend Equa. Thank you. And we are here. Thank you very much for your participation. Other important partners in this fight over the last five years are the tribal governments who have provided much needed financial support to power, power our equal advocacy. NICWA is pr privileged to receive generous support from nearly two dozen tribes to help us build an equal war chest to do this work. In last year and a half, as the Holland versus Bracken King case moved towards Supreme Court, the Protect Equal campaign work, he work heated up and many, many more partners join. One of those new partners is Rally, an advocacy communications firm, and Amy Bois is right here next to us, that helped with the campaign. Um, they also did the work um, through an in-kind uh, gift from the Native American philanthropy. Can't say that word. Tongue, tri tongue, tongue twister. Anyway, the, the give allowed a strategic approach to educating and building the base of support in Indian child welfare to influence, influence the public. And in turn, decision makers, we've been incredibly outcomes in securing earned media, changing the narrative, and attracting a robust and engaged social media following. Our partner, Illumina Native brought influences to the table and extended our reach even further. Throughout our campaign, we have also appreciated a good working relationship with the inventor, the intervener tribes of Bracken Case, the Cherokee Nation, Oneida Nation, Quinault Nation, and the Morongo Tribe Mission Indians. These leaders have met with our board and at their direction, their communication firms, SP, SKDK, has worked closely with us in coordinating our strategies and messaging. 
But the Protect Equal campaign is large, larger than us. It's larger than all the relationship and support I've described. At its heart, our work is for our children, for the future generation. At NICWA, we believe that the work we do to protect ch our children has to come from a spiritual place, a place where we draw in our teachings and traditional wisdom to keep our children safe and to preserve Native families. This belief led us to gather on the steps of the courthouse on the Supreme Court justice as the Supreme Court justice heard oral arguments on November 9th. The image that you see on the screen earlier that was being portrayed was still from those gatherings. More than 300 people gathered on Supreme Court to remind the justice of the full weight of their decision and who that decision was most likely to really impact. Thousands of people from tribal communities across the country stood with us, as did our relatives in Canada and Australia. Tribal governments, community groups, tribal citizens, and our allies came together in small and large numbers, gathering in hearts to place across Indian country to hold a space fiscally and spiritually as the court convened. Today we thank you for standing with us for being part of this work on behalf of, the, of our children and families and our communities. As we wait for the routine decision due by June 30th, we are preparing strategies and resources. While we don't know what the decision will be, these are many things we can do now to prepare for several different scenarios. We invite you to learn more about our work and equal at a breakout session tomorrow afternoon at 4.30 to 6. I just mentioned a few of these people, but it took a lot more, like yourself, to, to support us and the prayers that you rendered. I was not able to attend the court hearing on November 9th because that was the same week of our annual feast day. And so I was not able to attend, but I told my board during our ceremonies when we were in Kiva, I asked the people that were there to pray that day for it to be a good outcome. And so traditional cultural ways are still important, just like Juana had mentioned. But more importantly, we have to teach those ways to these children that we are protecting today. And so the protection of Indian child welfare is more than just a, an act we're protecting, but it's a way of life for our people. So with that, again, thank you uh, for hearing me today.